welcome and thank you for tuning in. As you can obviously see here, it's quite dark and it's also very windy. It's uh, five, five o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm in New Zealand on Mount Rupeu. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you will have seen in the last few weeks that I recently visit, visited Tonganero National Park and because of the weather, I didn't get the shots I want. So that kind of left me feeling quite disappointed. So once I got over that, it kind of made me more motivated to come back and get the shot that I wanted. So here I am today. I'm on the side of Mount Repayu. Is it going to work out for me? Let's find out. If you want to be part of a community of like-minded people, then you're in the right place. I love challenging the status quo and doing things differently. It just so happens that I take great landscape photography images and I share the stories behind them. And subscribe to my channel. Okay, so I've just set up here for my first shot. And what I'm actually doing, I'm using some of the erosion in this scoria desert to lead into the mountain. <clears throat> so I think I think that's going to work quite nicely. And I've set up my Mia 7 and I've got a 50mm lens on there, which is 25mm equivalent. And I've also got a three-stop medium edge grad filter on there as well to hold back some of the highlights. There is there is still quite a bit of snow on the mountain, which is quite nice, but it's starting to get a bit warmer here now in New Zealand. So we're starting to see a bit more kind of rock come through, which again is quite nice because it gives a bit more contrast. There's no clouds in the sky, but I'm okay with that. I'm hoping to get some of the belt of Venus in my shot, just to give it a bit of a, a lift in terms of the pink hues. Because there's no clouds in the sky, what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out quite a lot of the sky, so there's only a small band of sky actually at the top of my shot. Most of my shot, focuses on the detail in the ground leading into the mountain and then there's just a small band of uh, sky uh, across the top. So I've just metered my scene. It's it's too dark for my Seconic to meter the foreground right now. Uh, so I'm gonna have to wait a little bit for the light to lift. I metered the snow on the mountain and that's given me about one minute. So with reciprocity, that's kind of up towards two and a half minutes which is okay, but it's still it's still quite long, um, so I'm going to just wait for a little bit. So yeah, that's it. Got the first shot set up, and we're going to get that one in the bag. Quite excited about it, I think, especially considering last weekend. And yeah, so once I've got the first shot, I'm going to move on to another location and try and get another one. Hopefully it's going to work out. I'm quite excited, but you never know. Let's keep going. So I got a bit chaotic then. I was running around getting a few photos. I managed, I managed to expose around 10 shots. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. And the light was really good. You can just see behind me here on the mountain, there's a bit of pink light. So the, the dynamic range of the scene is starting to lift now and it's getting too challenging for my film. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to stop, but that being said, I'm really, really happy with the photos that I got. So I've been using these lines of erosion to lead the eye as a compositional tool through the image and I've got my camera set up in portrait uh, mode and what I, what I normally do in my photos I normally square crop them and I like to do that because it helps me build more of a portfolio with, with my images so I can essentially group two or three images together and then they become a collection and rather than just a single image and I think that works quite well because a collection can be more powerful than a single image and arguably some of the shots I've been taken are good, but together they're far more powerful, I think, than a single image. So I'm just walking round back through the compositions uh, that I've been taking photos of today. And I thought I would show you the compositions that I've been doing because 
I was in such a rush this morning to get the good light, I wasn't able to show you along the way. But on my way to these compositions, I just came across this kind of mound that looks like the remains of a tree, perhaps, that whenever this volcano last erupted, it just kind of instantly fried this tree and you can kind of see the black charcoal uh, tree trunks uh, still there. And it's just really unique. You don't often see things like this. It's really, really interesting. Well, the sun's definitely getting up now. <laughs> it's really, really bright. So this was one of the compositions uh, that I was taking photos at. And there's this kind of nice sweeping uh, sign of erosion that leads your eye up into the mountain. I quite like it because it's quite curvy and it kind of really comes in at the bottom of the image and just winds up straight up towards the mountain. So that was one of the shots. Hopefully that works out and I'll move on to another one. So this is another one of my compositions. I wasn't expecting to take this shot, but on my way to one of the other compositions, I came across this rock and there was just something about it that I just really, really liked. Um, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's just its size and it kind of framed really nice with a mountain and there's this kind of bank that leads your eye in. It's quite cool. So on Mount Rupeu, there's a, there's a crater lake up there that's quite full of water and Whenever there's eruption, uh, that lake empties and creates what's called a shalha. So I can only assume that these large riverbeds in this area are from those shalha. If you want to see what a, what it looks like up there, I was up there last year and I'll put a link to my video kind of here somewhere and you can check that out if you want to. So this was another one of my compositions. Erosion again, but a bit more kind of dramatic. Um, there's obviously been a lot of water that's come through this bit because there's quite a lot of lines. Um, again, quite interesting. Really like the way it leads into the mountain, and hopefully, it's going to turn out to be a beautiful composition and image. <laughs> well, the ground is so soft around here that you can still see my footprints, which is good because it's guiding me back to where my compositions were. Which is quite useful. Anyway, this is the second composition, and again, a similar shot but different in, in its own right. Again, leading into the mountain but just slightly different lines. And as you can see from a shadow, this morning I was shooting with the sun behind me, and that's uh, really important if you want to get the belt of Venus in your shots. Okay, so this was my first shot actually and again very similar but slightly different in its own right as you know erosion lines leading you into the mountain but now the lights lifted what I can actually see is that there's two clumps of bushes just there and this morning I thought they were actually rocks so I'll be interested to see how they turn out on the photos So it's such a barren landscape, this, and quite interestingly, there's all these little bushes that are surviving out here. And it's quite windy, as you can tell, and they're just kind of shaking around and glimmering in the sunlight, so it's quite nice to watch. So that's it for today's video. I've just arrived back at my car. I'm feeling quite happy with the shots that I've got. Although, you know, with film, you never know until you get them back from the lab. So I just wanted just to reflect quickly on what I did this morning because it was a bit of a rush and I'm going to try and explain now uh, some of the gear that I used and uh, the settings of my approach. So I was set up with my Mamiya 7 and the roller Fujifilm Bellevue 50 in there and I was using my 50mm lens which is a, a medium wide angle lens which is 25mm equivalent in 35mm format. And that's the lens that I use for all those images. And I quite like that lens. I like the perspective that it gives. You know, it's not too wide and it's not too narrow. And it doesn't miniaturize the mountains on the horizon too much. So most of my shots were either F8 or F11. As we started off and the, the light was quite low, I was at F8. And then as the light increased, we bumped up 
to f11 and i was metering the scene with my light meter and my exposures were started off around about a minute and so with reciprocity which is a term that describes the failure of the film uh, my exposures were getting up to two and a half minutes so that was the first shot and then as the light started to increase my exposures started to come up so they were up towards 30 seconds and with reciprocity that's one minute six seconds and then as I moved on and the light started increasing um, I was getting down to like two seconds and with the reciprocity that's two and a half seconds and with each shot I was bracketing um, so as I was metering the scene with my light meter I'm able to meter the the darkest area, me to the brightest area, average it out and then as I look back through the light meter and press the reading trigger again it tells me what EV uh, the scene is or that, that, that kind of spot so what I'm able to do is I'm able to evaluate the scene to determine the dynamic range of the scene so then it becomes a game of placement of each EV value and the way you do this is you have to consider uh, the Ansel Adams um, 10 stop range approach and basically what you do is you have to squeeze those 10 stops into the 5 stop film which is, which is easy to do so you basically place the darkest area around minus 2 or minus 1 and the brightest area no more than plus 2 so that pretty, pretty much puts you within the direct dynamic range of uh, Fujifilm Velvet 50 and so yeah, so I was bracketing the scene and my mid-tones were about plus one and zero and with my medium edge uh, soft grad filter that meant I was able to block out the highlights to compensate for that increased uh, exposure compensation. So yeah, went around, did about 10 shots approximately, although I've not counted yet and feeling quite excited about it got two shots for each composition so I think I should be fairly covered as as the uh, light increased uh, the, the dynamic range was getting up there a little bit so getting up towards kind of five maybe six so I think maybe some of them particularly the shots where I was kind of compensating by two stops um, I may have overexposed on, on the mountain on this with the snow so yeah those are the shots feeling quite happy about it. I'm really kind of quite impressed with the with the scenery around here. It's you know I've been photographing this area now for nearly a year and when I first came here I was really struggling to find compositions because it's so barren, you know, there's there's not much here. Um, but the more I've been coming here the, the more compositions I've been finding. Yeah so I guess that just goes to show that you have to really get to know a place um, to really unearth the best compositions. So I've only been coming here a year. I think there's more compositions to be had here. I've, I need to explore more in this area. Um, this morning I've been shooting Mount Rupeu, which is the largest volcano, but just over my shoulder here on the other side of the volcano is Mount Nariho in Tongariro, which is another volcano. And as we get further into summer, because we're now in spring in New Zealand, uh, the, the angle of the sun moves so that I'm able to get some shots of Mount Narihoe. And just in terms of my approach for light, I always shoot with the sun rise or sunset to the back of me. And I, and I really like that because it gives really soft colors and it works well with Fuji from Velvet 50. Uh, it's kind of low, low, uh, low contrast and one of the best things about using Fujifilm in 50 is that it adds contrast so it's it's kind of a win-win really the you know the Fujifilm LV50 gives great colors and, and great contrast and by shooting with the sun to the back of me um, it makes the photography easier and the colors nicer so yeah I think I think it works really well It's really windy here today. Still quite a lot of snow on the mountain, so if you're a skier, then it could be quite good for skiing today 
although saying that I'm not too sure how much uh, snow is still on the mountain even though it looks like quite a lot um, so yeah that's it for today's video thank you for tuning in I hope you enjoyed that um, it's been great to get out and do some photography and you know considering my last visit down here where I wasn't successful I hope I hope I hope well I think in fact I'm gonna be confident I know I've nailed it this time so yeah thank you for tuning in and I hope you've learned something uh, it'd be really awesome if you would subscribe to my channel that's the best way to support me now if you enjoy what I'm doing and you know, leave a comment that would be really really appreciated and you know I'm, I'd like to take feedback from you if if you think you you know I'm doing something that I could do better or if you just want to say hello that would be awesome uh, yeah and hit the notification bell you know if, if you want to be notified when I upload a video then that's the best way to do that and the other way to support me is to visit my social media sites you know Facebook and Instagram and yeah excited about my shots I'm gonna send them off to the film lab uh, on, on Monday next week and yeah hopefully hopefully I've done the job that's it bye bye and uh, I'll see you next time <laughs>